Hello out there to you. Let's do some examples of a monopoly graph, monopoly graph analysis. Okay, so um, what this is is a practice video, so I'm going to show you some problems. It's a good idea to stop the video, try it, and then I will solve them and you check your answer. If you went wrong, you see how you went wrong and think about it and fix it for the next time. And that's how it's go. Okay, so the first one, here's the problem, here's the graph. Got some kind of subscription monopoly, something like that. Okay, pause the video, solve the solve the questions. Okay, I'm back after being paused, hopefully. Uh, number one, profit maximizing quantity. So what that means is I'm going to produce up until the marginal revenue equals the marginal costs. Okay, that's what that means. Um, and uh, really, it's like the last unit, but in on a on a uh, monopoly graph, it's going to be pretty clear. So it's this point right here. Uh, looks like 3.5 is the quantity. What price would a single price monopolist charge? So we're going to follow this up to where it hits the demand curve, and we got $70. Okay, $70. Um, what does that mean? Okay, so what we're really asking is what's going on with the the profit or loss. Okay, so a couple ways to do that. You can do uh, total profit is going to be total revenue minus total cost. So you could find uh, the total revenue, which is going to be 70 times three and a half, uh, and then times the cost, which will be uh, right here. It's the average total cost. So like we'll call that 65. We'll just round it there. Uh, or sorry, 55. 55 times three and a half, right? There's another way to do it, and then to just find the difference there. The other way to do it is to just get the per unit profit. So I'm just going to write right on the on this here. So this in purple, okay, that's the that's the profit because it's the it's the the per unit difference between per unit cost and per unit quantity. So for that. It uh, looks like 15, so 15 is the profit, times the number of units, so that's 3.5. And not that quick at math, so 15 times 3.5. I get about 52.5, uh, and it looks like millions. 52.5 million, that's the answer, that's the profit. Okay. They will always be earning a profit if they're above average total cost. Is there a deadweight loss in this market? So the deadweight loss is the loss of efficiency. So if this market was efficient, we're going to be producing right to there. Okay, So I'll put that right there. And uh, going from here to here, here to here, that's the loss. So it's going to be the area of this orange triangle. So we'll go from 40 to 70. So this is one half. Uh, 40 to 70 is 30 times the number of units. So I'm just going to fudge that a little bit. We'll say that's uh, three and a half to uh, five. So one and a half. Okay, so that's uh, so 30 times 1.5 times 0.5, 22.5 million. Okay, 22.5 million. That's the loss of an efficiency. Uh, it's the area of this triangle right here. Loss of efficiency in the market. Okay, what quantity would a firm who could perfectly price discriminate? So that means that everybody's going to charge exactly whatever they value, uh, and we're going to say that that's so. That's going to be um, for that. They're going to charge all the way down the demand curve, right? So these guys will pay that price, these guys will pay this price, all the way, everybody's gonna pay, all the way until we're right here. So we're gonna say five, five million, okay? All right, that's the first example. Next example, I think I can zoom in a little bit. Oops, there, okay. Here's this one. Pause the video, try to solve the answer. Okay, I'm back after being paused. All right, 
Uh, what quantity will the monopoly produce? Okay, so we've got marginal cost, marginal revenue. They cross right here. So it's going to be 48. So they're going to produce 48 units. And then uh, charge what per unit? So we're going to follow this up to where it hits there. $6.40. Okay, that's going to be... Uh, the charge, if you want to get their total revenue, you just multiply these two together. Didn't ask that, but that's it. And then if you wanted to know their um, uh, their profit, we're just going to find the uh, area of that big rectangle right there. Okay. Didn't ask that, so we'll move on. All right. Monopoly is regulated. If the regulatory agency wants to achieve economic efficiency, what does that mean? It means that the point where the market will be competitive uh, right here. Okay. What price should it require the monopoly to charge? It's going to be right there. That's six dollars. Okay. Um, and at that price, how many units? We're talking about fifty-six units. Will the monopoly make a profit if it charges this price? And the answer is yes. It will make a total profit. And the reason we know that, whoops, let's go to there, is that this is the price. We follow this down to where it hits average total cost. This is going to be their profit. Okay. However, so you just calculate that. It's a buck twenty times fifty-six units. However, the the monopolist isn't ever going to voluntarily choose that because their marginal cost here is six dollars, and their marginal uh, revenue there is three dollars and twenty cents. So they're they're never going to voluntarily pick pick whatever that is. Okay. So that's that one with a regulated regulated market. Okay, zoom in a little bit. Okay, next one. Go ahead, pause the video, solve the answer. Okay, hopefully I'm back after being paused. All right, so let's go here. I already got purple. Okay, so profit maximizing quantity is five. What price would they charge? They would charge ten. What does that mean? Okay, well, it means, so go up here, follow this down where it hits average total cost. So it's going to cost seven per unit. They earn 10 per unit. And so that's going to be $3 profit per unit. So three times five uh, is $15 profit. Let's spell that right. Okay, uh, is there a deadweight loss in this market? Absolutely, deadweight loss is gonna be, uh, so if this market was left alone, it would be right there. Follow this down where it hits the uh, allocative efficiency or economic efficiency. Okay, so it's, uh, this is the deadweight loss right here, this yellow, that's gonna be uh, 0.5, so seven, because that's the difference between this and this. 7 to the distance between this and this, which is 2, and it's just going to be 7. So the deadweight loss is 7. That's the loss of efficiency from this market failure. Uh, quantity, if they could perfectly price discriminate, is going to be 7, okay? Because that's where marginal, re marginal cost equals demand, okay? So you just look for where marginal cost equals demand. Um, so at that point, there's no dead weight loss. Okay, next one. Okay, pause the video. Okay, hopefully I'm back after being paused. Uh, okay, given the numbers, identify the each of the following in the uh, for profit maximizing monopolist. So quantity produced, we're going to go to where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That happens right there. So it's going to be four. Uh, the price, we follow that up here. It's going to be 40. Okay. And allocative efficiency quantity is going to be out there. That's eight. Okay. That, that is the place where uh, marginal cost equals demand. Okay. That's, in other words, it's the competitive outcome but this market isn't competitive right so this is like uh, you know notice the marginal cost is flat this would be like if somebody comes up with some kind of um, uh, vaccine or um, 
copyrighted piece of music or, or movies or something. It's really cheap to reproduce, uh, but only they can have it. Okay. Uh, are they experiencing economies of scale? No, um, because the the uh, average total cost is staying constant. Okay, so that's what that one means. Look up a, a video or go read about uh, long run average total cost. You'll find more on that one. All right. What about it? Looks like two two more here. Okay. Uh, pause the video. Solve this one. Okay, hopefully I'm back after being paused. All right, this one's a little different. Profit maximizing quantity, marginal cost, marginal revenue. Right there, we'll call that 35. What price would the single price monopolist charge? We're gonna follow this, oops, follow this up, up here. It's a crooked line. So let's do it right, do it live. Okay, right there, right there. So I get, uh, I get about 45, so call that 45. What does that mean? Okay, well, it means total revenue is going to be 35 times 45. So there's going to sell 35 units times $45. That's 1575 1575 is total revenue. What's total cost if we produce there? Okay, let's find out. So we're going to go up here. And we're going to go right here. So that's about, we'll call it 65. Okay, so 65 is the, the per unit cost. So we'll do 65 times 35. That's 2,275. So 2,000. 75 right there. Okay. Uh, and so the difference there is the loss. Okay, so this is gonna lose money here. Okay, because total revenue is less than total cost, so we're gonna end up with some kind of negative profit. So we'll calculate what the difference is there. Okay, minus one five seven five. And I get a loss of seven hundred dollars. Probably could have done that in my head. Oh well. Uh, so the loss is seven hundred dollars. Okay. So that's what that is. Is the area here of the thing that I'm shading. So uh, is there a dead weight loss in this market? No, not really. Because I mean, I guess there would be a dead weight loss down here, but not really because that's not relevant. Um, because this firm, in the long run, is going to shut down because price is below average total cost, right? I'm sorry, they're going to not shut down. They're going to exit the market. So, um, and even a perfect price discriminator, you know, they're going to um, produce zero quantity in the long run. So this firm would look for a subsidy if you see any problems about that, okay? All right, last one. Actually, let's not do that one. That's uh, just a similar one. And so if you see the average total cost curve above the demand, then you know they're um, they're they're incurring a loss. Uh, this is a little like summary chart here. It's a little blurry, but it should give you enough if you want to pause it and and draw out the graph. Okay, these were some examples of how to solve graphical problems. Goodbye.